The sea can be a very unforgiving environment, and even intact ships can sometimes struggle. David Fone is investigating the stresses and strains on ships in waves, and what happens once they're damaged. Well, there are two main forces acting on a, on a boat when it's in water. The, the boat obviously has um, some weight, so gravity's wanting to put it down into the, into the sea. Uh, and because it's displacing some volume of water, Archimedes tells us that that will generate a force equivalent to the weight of the water, but in the upwards direction. So as long as these two forces cancel each other out and their net, net force is zero, um, the, the, the ship will float. But I guess you can have heavy things like engines at some point in the boat, so that it's not balanced in every part of the boat itself. No, it doesn't need to be balanced uh, per unit length. It's just that the overall weight of the ship can't exceed the buoyancy force that's being created. Otherwise, it will just keep sinking until it is uh, it, until it reaches an equilibrium. So I guess it's the actual structure of the ship which is having to um, do this redistribution of the forces. Exactly. The, the, sh the ship is designed structurally to, to account for certain areas where there are more things, heavier things, uh, and areas where there aren't. So you're studying these forces inside the ship. But I guess ships have been around for 2,000 years. People have been studying them in quite a lot of depth for a couple of hundred years. So what is the new to find out? Well, uh, our experiments are looking at these forces acting on a ship when it's damaged in some way. Um, and surprisingly, not very much work's been done on a ship that's damaged when it's in waves. A lot of work's been done looking at the stability of a ship when it's in still water, um, but nothing really on, on the loading of a ship, the forces on a ship when it's, when it's in a wave. That's really surprising, because you'd have thought that's the most stressful time for a ship when it's in a big storm with big waves. It certainly is, but it's also an incredibly complicated problem. I mean, if you think about the number of variables that are associated with a, a ship with some kind of damage, um, a few examples are the, the type of waves that are, that are exciting uh, the vessel, uh, the size of the damage, where the damage is along the length of the ship, uh, the shape of it, whether the compartment that it's flooded um, has got lots of machinery in it or it's a completely empty cargo tank. All of these things have quite a large impact on, on the resulting forces. So we're sitting next to a wonderful, huge, great water tank here. It's like 20 metres long, a couple of metres wide and a metre deep. So how are you using this to study these effects? Well, this, this tank we have here um, allows us to, to do two things. Firstly, we can generate really accurate, nice sinusoidal waves, as well as irregular waves. We can also tow models along the length of the tank, um, but our specific experiments we've got set up here are looking at the forces on a damaged ship, and more specifically, we want to also look at the effect of slow forward speed on the model, because this can be easily related to a realistic case of a ship getting some kind of damage out at sea and uh, the captain wanting to know whether it's safe to tow it back to a safe haven or to leave it where it is. OK, so behind you, you've got what looks like your model ship. There's something strange going on in the middle. What's that? Well, we've cut this model into two pieces um, and then it's been hinged back together. We've actually called this the hinged ship experiment. Um, and without the presence of our two little load cells on top, which, uh, which are devices that measure force, um, the two halves will move about the hinge uh, as frictionlessly as possible. Um, but when the two load cells are put back into position, it locks up the whole model into, two, into one whole piece. So when waves go past, the motion of the two pieces, two halves of the ship relative to each other, create a force, um, and then we can work out what the bending moment of the ship is through using a force and the lever arm distance to the lever. So this is the bend, this is the bending force, the bending moment at the centre, which is the place the ship's most likely to break. Yeah. So can we fire it up? Of course. That's producing a beautiful set of waves coming down here. Almost perfect sinusoids. I'm very impressed. Thank you very much. <laughs> Got a monitor here. I guess this is connected to some kind of readout on your machine. Yes, that's right. We have a, a series of sensors positioned all around the model um, to measure various things. Uh, we have. We have optical laser sensors at the front and, and the end of the, of the model, known as, known as the bow and stern. Um, we then have our two load cells that we previously discussed, um, measuring force in the middle. And we also have a series of wave probes that um, measure the fluid motion inside the damaged compartment of the model 
um, to see if there's anything funny or interesting going on in there. Okay, brilliant. So it seems like there's some fairly large forces on there at the moment. Yes, well this is actually the, uh, the worst case of uh, bending moment on a ship, um, which occurs when the, the length of the wave passing the, the model is, is the same length as the model itself. Because if you imagine freezing that wave uh, up against the model, there'll be a peak at either end of the ship and then a one trough in the middle where there's very little buoyancy force. And so the, the model will tend to bend downwards at its maximum amount. And then similarly, if you let time pass slightly and so you have a, a peak in the center of the ship and two troughs at either end, um, it will then hog, as it's known, as opposed to sag in the case where there's two peaks at either end. So have you found out anything interesting with this machine? Well, we have found that uh, the presence of, of damage, or actually a hole, makes an incredible amount of difference to, um, to the forces acting on a ship. Um, we had a, a camera in, mounted inside our model, um, and we did some experiments looking at uh, an equivalent mass of flood water in, in the ship, um, so filling it up with water but no hole, um, and then damaging the ship and letting it, to, and letting it naturally flood up to the same point um, and we recorded the, the behavior of the water under the same wave conditions uh, in each case and found that the case with no hole um, meant that there was a really violent uh, flood water behavior, whereas the case with the hole was a lot more, a lot more well behaved, um, which suggests that the, the hole is, is an important factor to add in um, and to consider like its size, shape, um, but it also it has an effect on, and it seems to damp, damp out the behavior of the flood water. So the hole seems to be taking energy out of the flows exactly. of the flood water. So hopefully what, everything you're learning here will be feeding into some kind of computer model which can be used out at sea by real sea captains. Exactly right. We're um, developing some tools here at UCL, uh, which these experiments will be validating. Um, and we work in, we're working in collaboration with the University of Southampton, who are also developing some higher fidelity tools. Um, but the whole point is that we're hoping that our software can be used at some point in the future for a captain when he phones in a distress call um, and tells us where the, wh wh that his ship's been damaged, where it's been damaged, what kind of size the damage is. We can then give him kind of accurate predictions of, of what's going to happen uh, to the ship, whether it's going to break in half, whether he can take it back to a, a safe haven comfortably or whether to leave it where it is. Um, and given the, the weather forecast, um, of the coming days, um, and this is primarily just to save, well, primarily to save money for a ship owner, um, and also to save lives.